Well, disc brake bikes have got a bit of a reputation for being fat and heavy. So manufacturers are really trying to address this and get that weight down to the UCI legal limit. Now, what manufacturers are doing, they're actually embracing an older technology that's been used by some boutique bike builders and adopting that into their mainstream manufacturing. So let's roll that intro and let's find out what is EPS and what are the benefits of this new technology and how does it make the bikes lighter? So what is EPS? EPS stands for Expanded Polystyrene or Styrofoam, which is a trade name for the same product. And you're probably familiar with it. Normally, if you're getting something that's delicate in the, in the mail, then it's surrounded by this polystyrene to protect it. So there's a lot of it around and it's quite cheap. It's easy to come by. But one of the beauties of it is it's very easy to shape into any shape that you like. So you can create a blank very, very easily from this product. And that's why the bicycle industry is starting to look at it in their molding uh, construction type and monocoque construction of their frames. Well, the traditional way of making these frames was to use pre-peg and molds and balloons. And the pre-peg was either laid up in the molds or it was laid up round the balloons in a certain format. And then the balloons were inflated, which would then act as a force or a compression to the pre-peg in the mold and this would remove any air bubbles or any folds that are in the pre-peg. So you are getting the maximum strength of the design that the engineers have come up with. Now the problem is with the balloons is they used to get creases in them, sometimes they didn't get to all the areas and you'd have parts that weren't fully compressed so you would have air voids in the laminates or you would have a fold in the laminate and any air or folds was a weak spot in the frame. So then they had to over-design the frames to allow for this variance in the manufacturer. So the frames had to be slightly heavier to so that any variances, it could meet its engineered design strength. Now with EPS, what we're having is a blank, which is only slightly smaller than the mold. And we can lay the pre-peg up on this EPS mold or blank. And then when you put it into the mold, you're not having like a balloon that needs to fill the space and then press the pre-peg. That blank is exactly the same shape as the mold, but only slightly smaller. So when they put it into the mold and close the mold, we're getting a much more accurate compression of the pre-peg. Now what this allows the engineers to do is they can reduce those tolerances that they were allowing for the balloons that didn't always do the job that they were designed to do and they could bring the tolerances down so they're, because their variances are less and then they can get away with using less material. So therefore the frames can be lighter and this is what we're seeing currently. We see a lot of these manufacturers their, their latest frames, they say that they've been made with EPS technology. And the new Look 795 RS is one of those frames, but a lot of other manufacturers are adopting this technique. So it looks like they usually get about 200 grams out of the frames using this technique over the older technology. Now EPS has been used by Colnago for quite a long time but only on their C-style bikes. And that's the ones that the tube and lug design. And they were using the EPS technology to make the tubes, which they then glue together into the lugs. Now, if you look inside a Colnago C-series bike, you'll see it's absolutely dead smooth, just like it is on the outside. And that's because it's been made on this EPS technology and the lugs have been made on a mandrel. So they have perfect surface interface when they do the compression of those parts. Whilst if you look in a normal bike that's used balloons, then you can see it's all wrinkly, it's not smooth inside, it's not that uniform. And that's the different technology and how the finish is. Now, what this allows the manufacturers to do is to reduce the tolerances that they're making in the bike because they don't have to allow for any slight wrinkles or laminations that weren't compressed properly and you know but they've got some flaws in the bike so then they have to allow more material to allow for those flaws to get the same design strength but if they're using a better process which is like the cps technology that compresses the inside perfectly 
then they can bring their tolerances down because the repeatability in the manufacturing is much better. Yeah, I just want to start a new section called Comic Corner where we look back at the last video, which was why did Tajay swap from a disc brake bike to a rim brake bike, you know, in these two mountain stages. And I put my views forward, but there was some people in the comments that suggested that it could have been to do with mechanicals. And they might have felt that because of the geographic location, that it could have been difficult to get the team cars to the rider. So therefore, they could have just got another rider up to him and could just swap the wheels over because we do know that changing wheels on the rim brake bikes is much, much simpler and easier than on the disc brake bikes. So they may have done that for a bit of a security blanket because they're the actual leading the race and a mechanical probably would have been their biggest risk to losing time. The other suggestion that uh, some people put forward was that Colnago may have actually wanted them to ride the rim brake bike because they actually offer that. They offer the rim brake bike and they offer the disc brake bike and they wanted to show in the tour that both of these bikes can be ridden and performing well and you can actually buy whichever one you want. So there were some really good points that I felt that uh, needed some reference and uh, that's where I'm going to leave it guys.